Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Monday and all of our guests today, including Tom Gillardi, standing by, sponsored by Passant Motors. May Day, it's May Days at Passant Motors. Purchase a vehicle in the month of May and choose one of three great promotional options. May Days only at Passant Motors. Learn more at B-A-S-A-N-T Motors. Uh, dot com. We're going to be joined by Tom Glarney, owner of the uh, Dallas Stars and the Kamloops Blazers. We found out over the weekend, I think it was Friday, that Kamloops is going to host the 2023 Memorial uh, Cup. And, of course, the Dallas Stars knocked out in the first round of the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs in seven games by the Calgary Flames. Yep. Tom Glarney uh, joins us now. How are you, Tom? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Good. Uh, First of all, let's start here. I know there's a big Game 7 coming up. We'll talk about that in a second. But we find out about the 2023 Memorial Cup in Kamloops, the city of uh, tournaments. I'm not sure exactly the uh, the handle they use, but it seems appropriate. Tom, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to Kamloops? The Memorial Cup is coming there. Well, I think they call it the Tournament Capital. Canada. There you go. Tournament okay. Capital, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and... Um, you know, it's 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 pretty interesting because the the city has a, a an infrastructure that's that's sitting there ready to use for all of these events, and so you know, a, a city of ninety thousand people are just they just have you know uh, you know great muscle development in terms of executing these types of events, and so we've got that standing behind the organization, and so you know, there's a reason why you know, the Briar, the, the World Championships, all of these uh, events come to Kamloops. And uh, so it means a ton. It's super important to the city. It's a huge uh, influx of, uh, of, of economic benefit. It's a source of pride. And, and as I said, it, it's a city that's built for these types of things, and, and they really relish the opportunity to, uh, to host big events. Tournament capital is good, but uh, you know the people in Kamloops uh, fairly well. Uh, throw that city of tournaments uh, by them, and they'll, they'll go for it for <laughs> sure. Hey, Tom, uh, Game 7, big game on, on Tuesday. Blazers and Thunderbirds, they've alternated wins in this series. What has stood out for you so far? Well, they're two even teams. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they. Uh, it, 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 I knew it would be a tough series. Um, they weren't healthy for a lot of the years, so I'm not sure we really saw their – the real team, but you know they're really good. They're they they seem to be a little bigger than we are, and and uh, and uh, it's that's posing some problems. Uh, you know we might be a little quicker, and uh, but their skill is is deep as is ours, and so um, you know we're in tough. The, the nucleus of our team is is a little young, and so this is a, this is going to be a, a tough game for us. But uh, you know we're home, and and uh, I think we have to be the favorite, and uh, you know we expect to expect a good result. Let's hope, but. Uh, they're a heck of a team, so it, it could go either way. Logan Stan Coleman is on fire for your Campbell's Blazers, and not only does he play for the Blazers, but he's also a draft pick of your Dallas Stars. What's in his hockey future, Tom? Well, I think when, when you're 18 years old and, and you effectively win the scoring race in the Western Hockey League, and the only reason that Logan didn't win it was World Juniors, and, and he was injured for two weeks. Uh, the two guys that were, uh, were ahead of him in the – we're barely ahead of them that played all the games and uh, played the same line and they're older guys. So when a, when a guy can do that at 18, it, it, you know, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to, you're going to be a top six player in the national league. So, um, you know, I know that the, the stars organization is very excited about, about the pick and feel really fortunate where, where we'll be able to find him in the draft. So um, we're, we're super excited. Tom, uh, games one and two against Seattle and Kamloops, uh, the crowd wasn't uh, great. I, I, I read some reports out of Kamloops. Is that just coming out of the economy still, or what, what did you think of that and um, those first two crowds against Seattle? Well, we had our largest crowd in quite a while on game five, so yeah, yeah. I think that's old. That's a little old news. But, in, you know, uh, in, in the bottom line is that attendance is off uh, pre since pre-COVID pretty much around the league. Right. And, and so, you know, we're all searching for answers why. But I, I think, uh, you know, from what I know of our market, uh, our older fans haven't returned, and that's really what's missing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, it's really, you know, the COVID pandemic. I think, I think two years of, of virus 
uh, our older fans got out of the habit of going. I think there's, there, there may still be some fear of the virus for attending, but I'm not sure about that. But we need to do some research to find out exactly why that is. But the good news is that, you know, we, we had a we had a really great year attendance wise. And what's 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 exciting is, you know, we're getting younger fans. The the Western Hockey League demographic is aging, and um, you know, they're 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 fans from a previous era where you didn't have streaming, you didn't have Netflix, you didn't have any yeah. every NHL game you want on TV. So going to a game was was really your best chance of great hockey entertainment. And so there's just so many more options today. That, And so as a consequence, the, you know, the fan demographic is aging. And so, you know, we've got to work hard to get younger people in. And the, and the good news in Calum we're seeing lots of families, lots of kids. And so, you know, we're turning that over. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but, you know, not to, uh, yeah, it, it, but we, we are off and that's generally the case around the league. But I, I think as we, we put some distance between us and COVID, uh, I, I think we'll we'll start to come back and expect a big gate tomorrow. And I'd say Friday was the biggest gate of the season. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, I want to talk about your Dallas Stars. How proud are you? Uh, how proud were you of them going to seven against Calgary, uh, Tom? Well, we didn't have our best stuff. We were we were pretty banged up, and, yeah. and Calgary's a, a heck of a team. Uh, they really are. We 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 thought they were the best team in the NHL, and from from all the analytics that we look at, they really were the most complete team in the league, uh, notwithstanding, you know, the Floridas and the Colorados. So it was a tough, tough out. And, uh, um, you know, they, uh, you know, we, we almost, we almost got it done in game seven. When we were, we were out possessed with the pocket and, uh, and outplayed, but, you know, we came really close. So, uh, it's, we're, we're sort of in the middle of it right now. We've got, we've got some young guys who are getting better. And so I wouldn't say this is our window. Um, we're sort of stuck a little bit in the middle. So, but you know, we we took some big steps. I mean, knowing now that we've got that goal, that goaltender is capable of doing that, you know, we took a huge step, and and so that's the under, you know, that's really the, the foundation. We've got some we've got some really key foundational players, you know, so Hints, uh, Robertson, Haskinen, uh, Ottinger. So we're pretty excited about the future, and then we've got the leading scorer in the OHL coming, and Wyatt Johnson, and of course uh, the aforementioned uh, Stankoven, and uh, some other players are really excited about. So. We expect to uh, get a little younger here the next year or two, and and and, and be a more competitive team. But uh, you know, the, the 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 group of the stars. I mean, they're the veteran group. They know how to battle, and I I knew that they would they would uh, play the way they did, and and uh, you know, stingy defensively. And we just needed to score a few more goals, and we couldn't quite do it. And, and as a consequence, uh, uh, Calgary moved on. And uh, I would have I would have bet the house they would have beaten the Oilers, but uh, that was quite a shock. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned your young goaltender, uh, Tom. I think Jake Ottinger is still a Conn Smythe Trophy uh, candidate after just one round. He was just so special. What do you think you have in him? Well, he's it's not a fluke. I mean, he's a six foot five accomplished goalie who who you know you know drafted in the first round. He was the top goalie drafted uh, in that year. So you know, I, it's not a fluke. I would say. He was number four in the depth chart this year. So, you know, welcome to the world of NHL goaltending where we had three guys injured ahead of him. So he ends up having to play a lot more than uh, than was the plan. So, you know, the the average goaltender starting in NHL is typically around 25 years old. So it's a, it's a position that takes a while to develop into being a starter. And, you know, at 23, he's, he's grabbed it now and obviously will be uh, – will be the starting uh, goaltender from here on out. So he's there a little ahead of plan and part, you know, he, he deserves a lot of credit for that. And also the circumstance uh, pushed him to it. And we're glad that he's, uh, he's grabbed the reins. Uh, Rick bonus, not returning as stars head coach. Uh, Rick uh, to the next me uh, says that uh, you've ha- hired Travis green. <laughs> Would you like to make that announcement on the show <laughs> right now? And what are you looking for in a head coach? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it, 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 I think uh, some different ideas. I mean, I, I, as an organization, I think we we want to we want to you know tinker with a little bit of how we play. Um, and uh, you know, I think Rick had three years as head, and then uh, two couple years before that as an associate. And uh, you know, sometimes it's just time. You know, in this in this business, that different voices are needed. And so I think that. The, the conversation between Rick and, and, and Jim Nell was, 
you know, maybe it's time. And, and so that's what, uh, you know, two gentlemen decided to do. Uh, I think we want to, we, we want to look for somebody that's really committed to, uh, to a bit more playing a bit, playing skill, uh, playing a little faster. And, uh, we need to score a little bit more and, and not lose our, our d- defensive identity. So I would say that. And there's a, you know, there's a long list of coaches that we'll be talking to. Would Travis Green be a candidate, Tom? Uh, yeah, I, I think he would. Yeah, I think Travis is, uh, has, has proven that he deserves to be, uh, to be, uh, uh, considered, and uh, I expect we'll be talking to him. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Did you have another question? Oh, I didn't have another question. No, no. Yeah. No, Tom. All's good, Tom. Okay. Um, <laughs> one one more from me, uh, Tom. Uh, Joe Pavelski ends up leading Dallas with uh, 81 points at age 37. Uh, what allows him to do that? And one of the reasons I'm, I'm asking you that is because Joe Pavelski's name often comes up in comparison uh, with J.T. Miller and the uh, possibility of J.T. signing a long-term contract and maybe being in Vancouver until he's he's that age. Uh, and your question is? What allows Joe to do that at that age, to be so productive at that age? Oh, he he... He is, um, you know, speed's never really been part of his game, and so he, he's just, he's just a, his, his hockey IQ is off the charts. Um, you know, hand-eye coordination. I mean, most of his goals are, are coming from right around the house there, and their tips, their rebounds, and so he's just a, he's just so smart at getting himself in the right in the right positions, and his stick is, is is so good. So he's a guy that's getting it done, and and it, and speed doesn't uh, his lack of speed now at his age. Hmm. Um, uh, hasn't uh, hasn't uh, held him back. He, you know, he's also the beneficiary of playing with two pretty talented young players as well. So, um, but having said that, he he's delivered and and he especially especially uh, gets it done in, in in tough in tough and important games. So, he's one of the one of the key leaders to the team, and uh, that's why we're bringing him back for another season. Best of luck uh, in Game Seven, uh, Tom. I mentioned the two teams alternating wins. It's 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 your turn uh, t- uh, tomorrow night if you believe in that sort of thing. But best of luck and thanks for joining us, Tom. Well, well, now we do believe in that. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. It's done. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. You bet. Uh, Tom Glardy, owner of the Dallas Stars and Kamloops Blazers. I think you could have on a lot of owners, and they wouldn't know as much about their teams and about the entire National Hockey League as, as Tom Glardy uh, does, and you could throw the Western Hockey League in there as well. Uh, the way he broke down the Seattle Kamloops, the uh, t- T-Birds were a little bit bigger, Donnie. Uh, we're a little bit faster. It's been a great series. You give Seattle credit. Uh, really looking forward to Game 7, Donnie. And uh, the winner will play the Edmonton Oil Kings in the final. Yeah, and uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, number one, you mentioned Joe Pavelski there, and you know speed was never part of his game. No, you could say the same. J.T. Miller admitted it himself. Speed is not really part of, of of his game. So when you see what Pavelski, I'm not saying for sure this is going to happen, well, but when you yeah. see what Joe Pavelski ha- has done at his advanced hockey age, you yeah. think maybe that could happen with J.T. Miller. The other thing I wanted to mention that usually in broadcasting when <laughs> When your broadcast point, uh, partner points at you, it means you got the I next question. I thought we were at the end. I thought we were at the end. I thought I, I during the I had given you this sign, and and I think that we were at the end. I thought you were at the. I end. I pointed, and I, think, I, I, I thought I, you I, nodded. Let's call it miscommunication, which is happens, happens a lot. Happens a lot on this show. <laughs> okay, we'll try to iron things out in the break. Uh, poll question next. Donnie and Dolly, the team on check.